expensive expensive accidents what's going on y'all attorney tom here in today's video we're going to be playing case or no case i'm going to be reacting to the twitter user at expensive accidents let's jump right into it <laughs> okay so clearly the the owner of the car is at fault bro Tim, sometimes it's just better to cut your losses just stop the car maybe take a deep breath, and then figure it out. Both the damage and the cleanup. Look, if you notice, he actually jumps too high and the top of his body hits this roof that we can't see, and that, that stops his momentum. I mean, it's still obviously his fault because you shouldn't do that. <laughs> oh no. Okay. If somebody were to get hurt, obviously it's the truck driver's fault. You know what? Silver lining, silver lining. It was probably much better for this truck driver to hit the signs rather than the bridge. I mean, had he gone full speed into the bridge, there might've been some more damage. And I hate to say it, this is actually fairly common. One of the first cases I ever worked on was very similar to this. My client was driving next to an 18 wheeler with a shipping container on it, and the shipping container was just too tall. So when the 18 wheeler went under the bridge, it hit the shipping container and it fell and crushed my client and her car. This is why I rarely leave the blimp. It's a, sc it's a scary world out there, dude. Some of the things I've seen Definitely messed up. That looks expensive. What are you doing? Okay, so obviously my knee-jerk reaction is that it's this driver's fault. They were trying to speed, going way over the speed limit, and they just lost control. Now, what I will say, and I have seen these before, is sometimes it is a product defect, meaning this is a Ferrari. It is a racing car. It is meant to go fast. And if something like a tire or some part of the car fails, well... It could potentially be a case against the car manufacturer or the tire manufacturer, but, 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 but those are very hard to prove. And you're going to have to have some pretty concrete evidence if you are going to pursue a case like that. Tire defect cases are not common, but very established area of products defect litigation. Who could have seen that coming? You know what? I'm glad everybody's okay. That was a very gentle rollover, it seems like. But obviously, it's this guy's fault. With that said, the passengers in the car, this guy who's getting trampled and this guy back here, if they were injured, they absolutely could bring a case against their buddy for driving recklessly. Reschedule has been made. Wow, absolutely. This is a huge problem, and it's a mega lawsuit if somebody gets hurt. And this is actually fairly common. Obviously not to this degree where the excess weight crushes the integrity of the structure, but trucks are overweight all 
the time. Now, with respect to who's at fault, it's probably going to be multiple parties. Who was responsible for loading the semi, making it that heavy? Who okayed that the semi was allowed to drive with such a heavy load? Oftentimes, I've seen cases where the driver objects to their driving conditions, whether it be the load is too heavy or they've been on the road for too long and they need some rest, and the company essentially forces them to drive. So hopefully they learned their lesson. It doesn't look like anybody got hurt here, but damn, dude, come on. It's not worth it to fit a train under a low bridge. Keep going. You're dead. 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 I mean, this is the, the, the Okay, so with respect to who's at fault, it's going to depend on who sent the train under this bridge. Did the railroad company outsource the logistics to a logistics company? Did the logistics company put the map in for this train to go this particular route under this low bridge? Because this bridge is, uh, it's stagnant. This bridge is what the bridge is. So whoever was in charge of the train route should have not planned for the train to go on a route where the bridge will do this to the train. I'm sure that won't be cheap to fix. I don't know if this bridge is a drawbridge, but, but I mean, even if it is a drawbridge, it's clearly down. Why is this chip even? <sighs> Why is this ship running into a bridge? Knowledge hammer. <laughs> Driving the new car off the lot. gosh man you know those volkswagens they have some real real power to them broom broom <laughs> obviously this person is at fault playing with the exercise ball <laughs> hey jim so quick question why is all of our office equipment destroyed? Well, Pete and I were playing exercise ball basketball and, uh, yeah, destroyed all the computers. Yeah. Um, you're fired. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Ship sliced in half. Incoming! Oh, that's a lot of damage! Y'all are making a lot of lawyers a lot of money. A lot of dumb people. A lot of dumb things happening. How do you think I got the splimp? Dumb people doing dumb things and hurting innocent people. You know, the entire internet, the entire internet gets a knowledge hammer. It's not actually the internet. It's the real world. You, you get what I mean. Stop doing dumb things, people. That's a lot of damage. You know what, I actually think this is a fairly interesting case. I knew somebody who had something similar happen. Obviously, it was not a crazy exotic sports car, but he did pay to have his car transferred from one side of the country to the other in a car like this, and it did flip over, and all the 10 cars on it got destroyed. And actually, the way my colleague's case turned out is that, unfortunately, there just wasn't enough insurance. Let's just say that there was... $2 million worth of cars damaged, but the transport vehicle only had $750,000 worth of coverage. So what ended up happening is the car owners pretty much got screwed. Here, I would be more optimistic that 
somebody transporting luxury vehicles has more insurance, but I mean, that's a lot of insurance. Yikes. Someone's insurance is going up. Yes. That is the most gentle helicopter crash I've seen. And actually, I know I harp on motorcycles a lot. Do not ride motorcycles. Don't ride motorcycles, please, y'all. Put me out of business. Don't ride a motorcycle. But a helicopter is, is not good either. I have never ridden on a helicopter. I have no desire to ride on a helicopter. There are a whole lot of injuries and deaths that occur because of helicopter accidents. Is it safer than a motorcycle? Probably and there are better types of helicopters. But, I mean, this thing's like a walking death machine. Come on, just look at it. Look at this thing. Oh, would you look at that? All right, that's it for today's video. Bye.